welcome to South Omaha Speed. Today we're at Hanson's Garage. Uh, Eric Hanson, uh, you might have seen him on some of the videos when we were scrambling for Trog. He came over, we built the carburetors on the coupe and did all kinds of amazing things to help to get that thing ready to go to New Jersey. So he's invited us over today. Um, his friend, uh, Big Tim Frome is here. You might know him from one of the videos uh, we put up a couple weeks, weeks ago where we were at his house where he was working on his Model A. We put the body on that day. Uh, today we're over here. It sounds like we're gonna get to help him a little bit with the chassis and maybe put the body on here today as well. So uh, we're excited to have you along on our adventure. We got Johnny here with the big camera. So thanks for coming, John. And then we got my dad's inside there and uh, Big Tim's in there. And uh, we got Kurt Hansen, Eric Hansen's dad. So we'll get a chance to meet all those folks. So let's go on inside and, and check it out. So we made it inside. Uh, it's amazing in here. Blessed to be here. Uh, inside here, we got Eric Hansen. We got Big Tim. Recognize both of those guys from when they were over helping on the coop, getting ready for trial. Couldn't have done without them. So thanks again, guys. Appreciate you on that. Yep. Anytime. And over here, we have Eric's dad, Kurt Hansen. And of course, everybody else, my dad. We're talking hot rods and eating food today, so he came along. So Lunch? <laughs> yeah, lunch. lunch. So here we are, Eric's chassis. Um, Eric Hansen, uh, been building hot rods since, you know, I mean, you were, when I first met you, you were how old? Uh, I mean, no, 16, probably, 17? Yeah, 16, 17. Right yeah. around that little, was it a T? Yep, you guys had yep, 24 yeah, 24T, yeah. Yes, that's right. and um, yep. amazing to see this young kid out there running, hot rodding, and like, who is this, who is this guy? You know, who's this kid? So we've known each other for a number of years, yep. and um, thanks for having us out today. Absolutely. Uh, to take a look, at, a look at the chassis. Um, so you had this car finished already, right? Correct, yep. Um, so it's a 3031 Model A coupe, uh, the body's over there, we'll show you later, but um, this is, I it had the same motor, flathead, uh, supercharged, but a completely different chassis that I had built. Um, and once again, I built it, you know, it was the first thing, it was probably 10 years ago, uh, maybe eight years ago I started on that chassis. And uh, it was kind of a chassis from a buddy's rat rod pickup, and then he kind of stopped on the project, like, well, I'll take this chassis and make it into something. And then, so anyways, by the time it was all said and done, I'd done so many other things, I wasn't really happy with the way the chassis turned out. And, um, and I pulled the motor out because I was having uh, trouble with, uh, with the motor sealing and stuff. And then while I had it out, I'm like, you know what, I need to fix this, this, and this on the chassis. It'd just be easier just to start with what I want, 32 rails, uh, the shorter wheelbase, 32 heavy axle, and all the stuff that I kind of want, and uh, change the wheels and tires a little bit, and then so here we are today. So very cool. So you you had the blower set up on the other. Correct. Yeah, the drive. the drivetrain as far as motor trans rear end was all uh, is all from the other chassis grill shell radiator. Uh, it's basically just frame rails, uh, front front suspension, rear suspension, all that's changed. So uh, this is just obviously a mock-up uh, block and stuff in there. Sure. Um, and, you know, the heads blow are all just mocked on there, but that's basically, uh, yeah, I put 20,000 miles on the last chassis and stuff. Wow. Drove it to uh, Austin, Texas for the Lone Star Roundup. Drove it to the Hot Rod Hill Climb twice. Raced it both times. Uh, one with the blower, one without. So first time I put it all together, the first probably 5,000 miles or so was with out a blower and then I put the blower on and then okay. so. And so and so we can start from the top up and work our way down. So sure. this, this blower set up here, so you made that intake, you, you take a uh, four burl intake and? Yep, yeah, okay. so it's uh, the, the blower case itself is original Detroit uh, GMC 471 uh, with a, um, I think it's just a YN uh, back cover on it. Um, the carb hat where the three carbs are on, that's, um, from a guy in Australia sells those. Um, and the carbs and stuff are a Holly 94s. I'm a Holly man, so I like them compared to the sure. Leaky Strombergs. I know all about them, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, made all the linkage, made uh, all the, pretty much everything, and um, the blower snout, uh, welded all those fins on, uh, made the tensioner for the blower. Um, basically, I had to build the entire drive you know, from, from scratch because there was nothing that, um, 
that you know you could really store store by for this. You um, have access to that machinery then? Where you yeah, yeah, exactly. Where yeah. I work, I get you know access to a lathe and mill you bet. and uh, I, and weld whatever I need to. So great job. Yeah, thank you. The, from, uh, that comes from a JB welder because <laughs> okay? I know you're a real welder. So that, <laughs> everything was great. So. Yeah, and then cool. um, yeah, like you said, the manifold's a uh, four bell offy. Um, from Speedway, and then uh, I mowed that out, um, the four barrel part out, and then welded that plate on there, and made and made it the blower to that. There's a burst uh, burst plate on it, okay. like we talked, and um, and then the heads and the blower and all that uh, had uh, all powder coated in this gray to kind of make it look like a magnesium looking. And trail of performance course, coatings. Trail performance coatings. Boys, in it, exactly. Yeah. Um, and you know, kind of highlighted the, uh, the aluminum and yeah. stuff. The fence. So. Looks great. Yeah. So this is just a big chunk of aluminum. Then you basically machine down. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Nice. Yep. Very cool. So what is the, this is a mock-up block, of course. Correct, yeah. So the, the other motor, yep. the, the actual real block is, what's the cubic inch on that? Uh, 276. Okay, is that a four-inch stroke then? Uh, yeah, so it's a four-inch stroke Merc crank. Uh, it's got Aries uh, forged pistons. It's uh, 80 over. Um, and it's got the ISKI 400 Junior cam, big cam in it. Nice. Um, and uh, let's see what else. What kind of boost you think you're running? Well, uh, so I had planned on around six to eight the whole time I was building it with uh, the math and stuff, but these are an old set of sharp heads because uh, they don't remake the 8BA sharp heads. They make the early ones, not these. Um, and they're stamped on there. Because this is an 8 nine, block, right? Nine, nine and a half to one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're, uh, yep, this is a, a 50, it was a 52 block, which, okay. so 49 to 53 motor. Okay. Um, and uh, they're stamped 9.5 on it, but I've surfaced the heads twice. I'm sure they've been surfaced multiple sure. times. Sure. So it's way too much static compression for what I thought they were going to be. So anyways, the boost gauge on the back here goes to 15 and it's pegged it many of times. So Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so she, yeah, wow. So she's really a rocket when that happens. But uh, <laughs> because of all that extra boost, I've definitely had head gasket sealing issues and stuff, of course, as, okay. you, as you would think. So that's why the motor's apart now, uh, putting MLS gaskets in it, um, blocking or uh, decking the block um, to try and get that stuff to all reseal and then, then I'll have it all back on the road. And of course, like I told you, I, I took the party pulley off. So we're, uh, down, a little bit. we're down a little bit on PSI. I changed the ratio a bit. So hopefully we can get back to that six to eight PSI and it's, you know, a little slower, but it's reliable. Sure. Um, you know, because I you drive you know, I want yeah drive thing cross country. Yep. We would like to go to Trog. We're, we're planning on going to Bonneville, me and Tim. So, um, so I got to drive it there. You know. Awesome. I'm hoping to go on that same trip. It'll probably be in a trailer. But yeah, uh, yeah, awesome. So you're going T5 here with adapter plates. Correct. Right? Yep. This is truck, isn't it? Or is that? Yep. Okay. Yeah, trucks for the cast iron. Uh, Mercs are the stamp steel. Because original, the early flatheads have the bell housing been in right? Yep, all integral to it. So this is basically one piece on the early uh, 48 and earlier motors. Okay, so that's um, that's the truck piece there. Yep, that's the truck adapter. That's, of course, the Speedway Offy uh, adapter to T5. That's just a Camaro T5, not the S10 one like most people have. I just like the shifter location a little bit better, a little shorter right. in the coupe. Um, and, uh, and then just a 59 uh, Ford narrow 9 inch. Is it the same when you're running the old chassis? Um, the one? housing's uh, it's housing's different, but brakes, center section, all that stuff's all the same. Gotcha. And what gear so, are you running? And it's a 456 rear gears. Ooh, so, so that five-speed. Five speed. Yep. And it's all tire. It's all tire. 31.5 tire. Okay, so it's a 750, 750 big tire, right, Tim? 750, 60 Firestone. Yep. Tim says it's all you can run these old. That's old, right. Is the tall ones. That's the big right. dog. So, right. Very right. cool. Nice. So I see you got your your sway bar set up back here, which you normally don't see. Right, hot rods, right. right. I mean, you really don't see it, the sway bar, so that's really cool. I like how you use the dog bones too to yep. give that vintage look. Yep, just trying to stick to you know mostly all vintage. I mean, the tube shocks. Um, I was going to do friction sock shocks like I did on the other chassis, but just for the drivability and, and um, I like I like uh, these tube shocks, but they're pretty well hidden. I've um, experienced that myself. The yeah, there's a difference. yeah, there's a there's, there's a, a difference. big difference, you know, yep. and and. These are oil-filled tube shocks. 95% of the shocks you can buy are gas charged. Um, and they work good for coil springs, but for leaf springs, it adds 70 pounds of spring rate to them. So these oil ones is like what old cars have. And old cars, of course, ride nice. You know? Sure. They're not jarring. Right. So these are uh, Volkswagen shocks, and they still make them in oil-filled. Okay. So I think that'll really improve the ride quality back here. I didn't know that. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, Very and, cool. And being Volkswagen, they sell them short, standard, and long for buggies and, right. and low riders. You so. only made a million of those cars. Exactly. Right? Maybe a couple yeah. million. A couple so. million. Right. Right. So um, your sway bar, what, what is that? Is that store-bought? Um, yeah, it's a store-bought uh, sway bar. It's actually for a Mustang, um, 60s Mustang. For rear? Yeah, for rear. Correct. Um, 
So it's short and it's uh, it's only a three quarter shaft. So it's not you know it's not obviously not a heavy car. Sure. It doesn't need a lot of sway bar, but just something to, for cornering and stuff, yeah. keeping the tires down on the ground. Yep, yeah. exactly. And I see you get the greaser here too, which is kind of yeah. Rare. Did you, yeah. Did you put them on there? No, that's how that's how it actually came. Yeah. Okay. You think it would have been you know normal urethane bushings, but right. It's all rubber, kind of sticking with the older theme of all that stuff. Right. You got two adjustment holes here. Yep. Right? You got options. Yep. Stiffer exactly. Or softer. Correct. Nice. Um, and then uh, the bones are thirty five six rear. The, the long ones that everyone likes. Yep. Um, and bolt on and off. Yep. Bolt on and off. Eventually, I, I'm going to add, um, uh, basically triangulate them. So add another bar here, uh, like yes. a ladder bar. Yep. You know, because originally they have a torque tube uh, goes to the trans, and that really helps with the axle wrap yes. up. Yes. And I've been a set of radius rods with this car before. So uh, I can imagine. Yeah. With, <laughs> with burying the boost gauge. Yeah. Probably exactly. do that. Exactly. So these ones are going to triangulate and make them a little stouter. Okay. Um, Very cool. And, and so uh, you run straight spring, right? Yep. Is that, is that yep. A thirty. Spring? It's a thirty-five-six okay. straight spring. Uh, thirty-five-six is, is the narrow one, and it's pretty flat. Um, to work with the bones. Correct. Yeah. Right. It's the same width as a Model A buggy spring, but it's the more flat one because I, I was trying to keep as much trunk space as it's I can for sure. tools and when yeah. you're driving them. Right. You gotta yep. take the stuff right. with you. you know exactly. What I mean? No lawn chairs, just right. tools. Right. Your wife's gonna take her stuff with her too. Right. right? So right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So the, the frame itself. So the new frame completely. Correct. Yeah. yeah 32 rails. You uh, started just with bare rails. Yep. Bare rails. I started with the X member is of course 35 to 40. Pretty, uh, in, in you, aftermarket there. or is that off the frame? No, nope, that's off an old rusty original yeah. one pulled oh. out of the dirt. So I'm trying to keep as much original stuff as I sure. can. Sure, you know, it looks great. That's the whole point of Did it, you make so. your own plates, boxy plates? Uh, not those ones. I modified those. Uh, I will have to make you know the, back. Rear, the rears and fronts, of yep. course. Yep. Um, and since I mentioned earlier we were going, we want to take it to Bonneville, uh, me and Tim driving both our cars, driving out on the salt, not racing competitively. Sure. Yep. But we get them out there. Get them out there. Uh, I'm kind of conscious about building it as far as making no nooks and crannies for salt to sure. store in and yeah. stuff like that. So yeah. some of this stuff will be radius. These will be boxed okay. just so eliminate as much salt. Collecting. High, yeah, collecting salt. So right. um, that's kind of the theme with the chassis. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, I'd say you're, you're, uh, you got spot on for a Bonneville racer, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, you're going to race it, but I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, it's got the look. It's got the look and so It's going to handle. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you made your own plate here then. Is that your own design? Yep. Yep. That's uh, just a... Cross member there, I made out of quarter inch uh, plate. Heat, it, heat and beat it around. Heat and beat it. I like how so it, it kind of looks like a stamped yeah, know, factory it does. piece. Yeah. Um, and of course, the wishbone's attached to it. It also doubles as the trans mount. Right. Um, I like the way you got your square nuts on here, too. Yep. I would have used regular nuts because I don't even know where to get square nuts. So yeah. that, is, that looks legit. Yeah. I mean, it looks yeah. old school, right? You mean? Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, and, and that'll be, I'll leave the lightning holes in those, the factory round ones and stuff when I box that, and then yep. I'll put tubes in there, uh, like the wishbones and stuff. So, yeah, very cool. Um, yep. so, so, I, yeah, that, uh, I've, I've heard that same problem before, and I was trying to do the same with my dad's wishbones on his chassis, which I'm not there yet, but yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. As far as triangulate them and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah just to make them stronger. You, when you eliminate that whole torque tube, yeah, I think that's, you know, that's all that strength that is gone. Wrap. Right. Yes. Right. So, and with the 30 by 6 being the really long ones, um, you know, if it's a short one, it's you can get away with a lot more, but really long, right? They have more tendency to bend. So, so, so on the front end here, I noticed you got your your uh, your bungs right in the center of the frame. That's a great look. Yeah. When I, when I built that Model A with my dad, I put them, hung them down low. I didn't know any better. Right. You mean it, yeah. which, Maybe on a Model A, it looks doable, yeah. but on this here, that is, that is a great look. Yeah, thank you. It, it, as you can see, it took a couple uh, a couple stabs to find the well, right spot. Well, you know. To get the caster right, and you right. Know, a lot of uh, back and forth, setting it on the ground, checking stuff, and putting it back up in the air. So, But I think I'm pretty happy with it now. Yeah, it looks great. Um, so, so what do you got going here? You got some serious stuff happening here on the front here. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? You got your shocks inboard. Uh, what do you got going on? So, you know, I, I, once again, I wanted the look of uh, post-war traditional rod, of course. Um, and really, the first thing, main thing I did with the rails is they're not just, you know, I didn't leave them alone. They're bobbed front and rear. There's no frame horns right. on the front and rear. And from pretty much from this point, they've been pinched in uh, at the spreader bar would be four and a half inches. Okay. And they've also been kicked up at the spreader bar an inch over. So okay. it gives it a little bit more of the hot rod rake and look yep. uh, because it's a stock 32 axle height wise. So I'm not running a dropped axle because once again, it's late, late 40s. Yep. They, they weren't really dropping right. stuff quite yet. Yep. Um, but anyways, so that slides the frame horn in 
so it's flush with the 32 shell. You know, normally it's out here. So it'd be with inside the hood if you were going to run one. Right. right. If I could run a hood with the blower and stuff, it yeah. would all be more streamlined and it flows with the body and everything more right. for that uh, dry lakes look. Well, with going with that theme, I wanted to keep it all traditional late 40s. So I love the look of the early friction uh, hydraulic shock, but um, I kind of was trying to figure out how to do a sway bar in there and once again, like I was saying, I like those oil-filled tube shocks, and I kind of want to experiment with them as I drive the car if I want to try different brands of shocks and stuff. Right. With these, I was locked into that one style only. So I decided to uh, basically, if you follow the way it goes, it's a dog bone here going into, uh, this is a three-quarter inch shaft that runs through the shock. The shock's hollowed out. It's just For basically looks, a cover. A pivot. A pivot. Exactly. There's a big bronze bushing in there. That runs all the way to the other side. So that's your, your sway bar okay. right there. Three quarter inch sway bar, that's yep. a good size yep. for this car. And then and it's a D shaft, so it keys into it so it can't slip. Right. Then uh, on that then, then I have this um, adjustable arm there that's clamped to the shaft as well. Nothing's welded, you know, so it can all slide in and out, yep. take it all apart, yep. service it. You bet. Um, and then that goes to an oil filled tube shock that's hidden down on the frame rail. Um, had to make some custom adapters here with the lathe and stuff to tap, uh, use a factory cell tie rod. So I'm trying to make it look, you know, period correct, no high Vintage, really. Yep. Yep, yep, exactly. Well, it looks great. So, and thank so you. you made these, I take it off, obviously. Yep. These, and this is an adjustment hole for you too, so you can... Uh, it's not necessarily an adjustment hole, it's, it can be. It could uh, be. It's yeah. the same size, but it's more just for, you know, light, right. lighten yep. it up. Yep, looks great, yeah, for right? sure. So, go, like I said, go for that lightweight, um, Lakester look so okay um, and then you know a lot of it of course would be painted black and the header is gonna it's got lake style headers on it, so that'll cover up any. right so if really from a, at a quick glance from the outside all the way around it looks like factory Henry Ford suspension and yes. all that stuff. yeah so, it looks amazing so, so the, when, in what year are these is this model, That's a? model a yeah. okay yep gotcha and what kind of cash are you running I guess it says right there 12 and a half yeah 12 and a half is what I have it set to I'd like to be around nine and a half so we're gonna set it on the ground today and see uh, see I'll measure it again. I can make slight adjustments with with the wishbone. Is that, that you said it's a vintage Ford? Axle? Yep, it's original heavy thirty two. Thirty two. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. And there, is it equal on each side? If it's twelve and a half here, twelve and a half here, or nine or nine, is it the same, or has it got twist to it? Currently, it's it's the same. Oh, but. Man, every axle I've ever put together is like yeah. it's off by a couple degrees. Yeah, I know. Side no, side, no, so. The axle I pulled out of here. Was, That's amazing. It was it's so uh, it was bad. Yeah. Yeah. It was like this. Was so, it? Yeah. <laughs> So this is a new axle to the chassis then? Correct. New axle to the chassis, yep. The bones are left over from the old chassis. Those okay. are uh, 40. Did you put those holes bones. there and fill yep. them and everything? Yeah, I put the holes in them. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work, yeah. yep. Looks great though. Um, Very cool. Yep. So, so so you were talking a little bit about the radio, the radiator, if you wouldn't mind just telling yeah. that story again. We, we, we were kind of setting the camera up, and I know you talked about that, and that'd be an interesting story to tell. Right. The, uh, the radiator is just simply a, a Speedway Mustang, 64 to 6 Mustang aluminum radiator. And they sell them for, I don't, they're probably 300 bucks now, but at the time they're 250 or so. Yep. I've got this in this car and my 51 Ford F1 pickup with a flathead in it. I got the same radiator in it. And they're cheap and affordable. And fit right in there. Fit yep. right in a 30, wow. this is a two inch chop 32 shell. And she fits in there. And like she fits yeah. right in there. So, um, and it's aluminum, so I can weld all my brackets to it, weld the extra necks on for flathead. Well, people um, that can weld aluminum can. I, well, yeah. I'm JB welding that. You know what I mean? Well, but, you can uh, JB weld it on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So that's it's a, a it's a good affordable option versus so you know seven eight, yes. eight nine hundred dollar Walker or whatever. Right. So and and like I said, they both motors ran cool until I had head gasket issues. But right. they both we ran. We don't cause that, don't we? Yeah, exactly. That, uh, yeah. Too much right foot. Right. <laughs> the party the party pulley. The party pulley yeah, caused it. That'll right. do that for right. sure. Well, that's great. So. So your steering arm here is it's all I would assume you made that. Yeah, yeah, I made the steering arm. It's obviously not done yet, but it's uh, it'll all be blended to make it look like a factory uh, yep. Ford dropped arm and stuff. Uh, he, you know, tap that and and he did bent that all around and stuff. Nice. Um, so what brakes you running on this thing? Uh, so the the brakes are uh, F1 on okay. the front, um, just like Tim's. Yep, yep. just like self Tim's. Um, yep. Self adjusting or self adjustable, and then uh, same on the rear. They're just um, nine inch, ten inch drums. Okay. Self adjusters on them as well. So both self energizing, self or you bet. automatic adjusting. And the pedals, the pedal says a thirty nine style pedals. Are you? No, I have swing mount pedals. So I built. Uh, on the on the body itself, okay. with uh, 60 to 62 GMC, the dual master cylinder with a clutch, hydraulic oh, clutch, nice. and brake on okay. one. They still yeah. hanging in there. We get a chance to leave them. Today? Yeah, yeah, okay. they're in there. So we can when we look at the body later, I can show you that stuff. So great, great. Yeah, I, I just did the swing mount pedals um, just for sealing purposes. You know, a little right. bit better than the floor mount stuff. It gets pretty uh, crammed down there. So. You bet. 
Cool. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I guess we could uh, maybe roll that body out and take a look. Absolutely. Awesome. So the game plan, what are you thinking? So I like to get the chassis um, off the table, down on the ground, and then eventually roll and set the body on it. Uh, and then because I, I kind of finalized, changed up some shock stuff, um, some bump stops and some other stuff, I want to check the caster one more time. And then if everything's good to go, I can blow it all apart and weld box, uh, put box plates in and weld the whole chassis off. Nice. So I, I need your guys' help to right. pick the chassis up, set it on the ground, put the body on it, and then uh, and we'll use this crane here uh, that I built to, uh, to do all that. It works pretty slick. Okay. So, so you were saying earlier you got this from a machine shop here in town? Yeah, a machine shop here in town. They had it on the wall and they used like cast iron uh, pillow block variants uh, up there in the corner and they were hauling a big uh, cat diesel motor and the thing fell and um, <laughs> broke the casting and the whole motor fell, the oh. whole train fell. No one got hurt. That was Thank goodness. That's what I heard. And uh, so it was kind of a bad omen to them, so they didn't want it. And, right. Uh, so I bought it and uh, ended up uh, really beefing it up and making those uh, big hinges for it. And they use tapered F1 Ford uh, roller bearings. Nice. I have, had a pair laying around right. and, and turned them up in the lathe to get the tapered seats to press right in there. Very cool. And the thing, it moves like butter now. It's actually too slick. <laughs> okay, all right. This but, sounds uh, a little easier uh, day for us. I mean, yeah, exactly. Not a lot of heavy lifting. Right? Yeah, just, cool. uh, just kind of coordinating with the chains and stuff. So, and yeah. uh, this, this one's really cool here, this chain block. It actually says Ford on it. What? That's amazing. Yeah. Oof. Ford differential block. One ton. Yeah. If you can read all that, but. Oh, that is cool. So that one works pretty slick too. Nice. Which one are we using today? The Ford well, one or the other one? Well, we can. We'll probably end up using this one just because that one it doesn't really get up quite as high. Gotcha. So Makes we'll, sense. we'll use this one. The orange I one. Ask. I know. You know yeah, we can, but it's with it all the way up here. It's kind of a pain. Right. Body's out. We got it out. Uh, Ferguson helped. Yep. The cat. So I love the artwork on the side. So um, the artwork's actually from a Life Magazine 1943 article of uh, just showing a big, big World War II uh, buff. So especially with airplanes. So anyways, there's a 43 1943 article where it's just showing a bunch of B-17s and stuff. F's uh, B-17F is like the Memphis Belle. So that's one of the first. Uh, mass-produced models before the G and uh, anyways there's just a, a small little black and white picture you can barely see of uh, this this is the art on the side of it wow. I just always that was just always such a cool looking logo and you know there's hardly any history about the plane the plane crashed in Germany in 1944 okay. everyone aboard 
perish. Right. Um, rest our souls. Rest our souls, unfortunately. And uh, anyways, I just thought it was kind of cool, you know, just one of the things that no one, I'm sure, you know, no one knows about those 10 guys that were in that plane or whatever. Yep. So it's just kind of a little Absolutely. tip of the hat to them, I suppose. So, right. and, and it's uh, cool artwork and goes with the, 40s era thing it, it, it the car. absolutely does so. yeah and my when i was a kid i would ride the motorcycle around in the back of the garage and come out and my and I, my, my dad come out you're coming out of there like a bat out of hell yeah <laughs> so, I mean, you, you get yelled at so i know that term well so yeah so it's a 3031 yep right and so where'd you get the body at um actually let me see if i can i think there's a picture in here uh, here we go so this is what the car looked like when i bought it wow so I paid a hundred bucks for it. Okay. Uh, Bill Zeleny Jr., the guy here in town, a good friend of mine, he, a friend of a friend told me that he had it and is uh, out in his backfield for his kids to ride dirt bikes around. It's just an obstacle for them to jump over and just run and do and whatever. Sure. <laughs> right. So uh, paid a hundred bucks for it. I'm like, yeah, that'd be a good start. You know, I can at least get some of the pieces and build, right. the, build the chassis, the first chassis. Uh, to somewhat dimensions that I could pull off of that body. Sure. Well, and I had always wanted to do a 20 and 29 instead. Okay. Dimensionally, as far as the chassis is concerned, it's the same size. So I wasn't too concerned about it being 30 31. And as time went on, I never really found a 20 29. And I just kept slowly fixing pieces as I needed them to suit building the chassis. And next thing you know, I'm like, well, I guess I'm halfway to fixing the thing. Might as well just finish it. So right. that's where I'm stuck with now at 3031, which I end up liking it probably more, I think. Sure. But that's just how it, how it goes over a, you know, that long of a project. So. Right. So what is original to the body when you got it? So what's MCU? original to the body in that picture is um, mostly just the stuff back here. Uh, you know, I filled in the original seams that are right here. And so this quarter half and that quarter half are from uh, different cars. Um, and so this middle section was actually caved in. You can see in the picture really bad. A tree fell on it or something. So I, I hammered all that and fixed that. So this middle section and these quarter tops where this is all patinaed really bad, um, that's all pretty much original. That's about the only original pieces. Okay. Part of the subframe, just a couple little scraps here and there really. Did you make any pieces yourself or did you? Yeah. the. Uh, I, I end up uh, looking for a set of quarters forever. I never really found a set, so I end up just making a set from, there's a weld basically right underneath this bead all the way to the front jam. And I just made that whole piece from there down. So made these, wow. made, made that flange there, this bead. And I actually raised the arch up two inches. So you can see that's a lot skinnier through there. Okay. Um, kind of more 32 proportions. And that's, that arch follows, it's a much more consistent circle and it follows the 31.5. Tire. tall tire nice um gives it that look exactly because factory model is they kind of flatten out through here you really don't notice it with the fender but with the fenders off you can see it yeah you can kind of see it so did some changes wow. i kind of radius some of this stuff so this looks more 32 ish so so, so it'd be safe to say that if you're making your own quarter panels i'm in the presence of greatness because that's amazing <laughs> so well done that, oh that's they're awesome they're definitely not straight at all but i want it to you know right. look like an old ratty hot rod yeah, so. well well done well yeah. done yeah i sharpen pencils stuff like that's where i you know, <laughs> tie my shoes but that's amazing with the quarter panel so good on you man that's great so the the drip rails uh i made them too they're kind of more like i said i i liked the 32 of course i can't afford a 32 right so i take a model a and and make it look as 32 as i can so sure. kind of more 32 looking that's it's actually half by half tubing and then just slice that slot okay. out of there you know okay. what i mean and then yeah. just heat and bend it around yep because uh, the original ones were so ratty and pitted um and um the doors are off a different car the cowl and the gas tank lid are off a different car just a bunch of other random Model A pieces here and there. And, and of course they all needed patches. I, I made this door skin for this door um, and it's welded through here somewhere. Right. Um, so it's, it's a four inch chop. Planching hammer, English wheel, the whole bit. Yep, yep. Um, nice. The roof skin is, is actually 67 Chevelle. <laughs> Just okay. a, a one left over uh, from work. Um, and it fit the arch pretty well and just nice. you know, welded it all in there and, and hammered and filed it all around, which is a bit tricky. If I would have done it again, I would have uh, left the roll cage out before. Right. <laughs> it's a bit hard to work around the roll cage, hammering all that stuff around. But right. End up working out okay. Especially sure. for the patina look, you know. Yeah, I, it I looks. Don't wanna, I don't want a perfect car by any yeah. means. So. The patina is amazing. So thank so, you. Uh, yeah. Probably won't give away the secrets on how to do that, and I wouldn't either, but man, that is just looks like it's vintage, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Wow. Very cool. And the dash, did you pull that out of the car? Yeah. 50 Ford? Yep. Uh, the dash is 1950 uh, Ford car. 
Uh, it's, I narrowed it about six inches on either side, uh, right here and here. Did you find that in the junkyard? Or did you uh, uh, it's kind of from just a, a buddy, uh, kind of local guy. Um, I was buying some flathead parts from him, mm -hmm. and he had that too. And I thought, oh, that'd be a cool dash to. That's very cool. So that was one of the first things I bought with the car, actually, was that dash. That was kind of a goal from, from the start. Right. You got that cage up in there, just tucked up the roof. Yeah, and, and you know, obviously the cage isn't you know, uh, certified of any sort or anything like that. It's really just because all the wood structure's gone out of the car. Right. I just want something to beef it up, and in case if it does roll over, it might provide some. You got a chance. Some protection. Yeah, I'd yeah. say you definitely got a chance with that. So it, it looks substantial. So racing it at the hill climbing stuff, I needed a place to put seat belts, attach them to. So right. So, yep. Yep. For sure, looks great. Made your own floor, obviously, with the tunnel and yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, that's just all yeah, 19 gauge sheet metal. Nothing super crazy there. And what kind of handles here? Um, those are Jag. Uh, I think it's like 60s Jag, same as the gas fill. Uh, okay. Right here. Nice. And so, about your steering box, it's a sprint car style, right? Yep. So it's a Schroeder steering box. Uh, it's an old one from you know back in the day. Uh, I got it used um, at a swap meet somewhere and. Um, it's the, let me think now, eight to one ratio. Yeah, eight to one ratio. I think there's a six to one and an eight to one. This is the eight to one. And it's still really, that's really fast for the street, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and you can really change a lot of the geometry by your pitman arm length right. there. And yep. of course at the spindle, but you also have to look at, you know, your angle of everything, angle of everything right? So that you're limited with all that. So you don't have the correct bump steer right. and all that. So. Um, what I ended up doing is I made an overdrive for it in here. You can open up that door if you want. Um, so this is a, there's a planetary gear set in there that okay. I made. Um, so the original box starts there and then I made from this up. Okay. So inside there's just a big ring gear, a uh, big circle, uh, internal gear, and then another little male gear going into it. That's where that goes in. See, it's really? It's off offset? Right? Yep. Yeah. Wow. And so that, that doubles the ratio, so now it's 16 to 1. Okay. So now it makes it a little bit more streetable and, yep. and That's a easy. Idea. Yeah. And uh, well, I can't take credit for it. The uh, Schroeder actually sold a one similar to that, same design where it yep. doubles it and stuff. And I tried buying one from them, and they said, and it was kind of when they were in the middle of selling out and uh, closing their company down. And um, they, they wouldn't sell me one. I don't know why. I, the lady, you know, didn't, she's like, no, we don't. We only sell them to race car guys, not street. You can't stop street legal, blah, blah, blah. Sure. Give me a bunch of stuff. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll just make one. So. <laughs> sure. So, Problem solved. Like, how hard can it, how how hard hard can can it be? be? Yeah. What are, we, what are we looking at here? Um, you know, that's just a, a oh? cool boat wheel. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. I, I always like to get boat wheels because they're generally 14 or 15 inch small. Right. Yep. And uh, it's cast aluminum. Yeah, very and, cool. And it's got the quick release. Oh, yeah. Know, base car hub on it. Yep. So getting in and out. Yep, getting in and out, but also you know when driving when movie. Drive -in movie. Drive -in movie, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yep, I got it. Right, and when you're traveling, uh, I like to take it out, take it in the hotel room with me. Yes, it's one less, one, one less more thing that, that deter them. to deter them, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Very um, cool.
And I think it goes to your right a little bit. Or right. Yep, straight there. I guess we can just buy it around. Thank you.